financial problems, elder law, tax problems, business matters, divorce, personal injury, bankruptcy, your life, your reality. Life is complicated. There is the law and there is reality. Welcome to Law and Reality, sponsored by Thav Gross. Now here's your host, Ken Gross. Welcome to Law and Reality. This segment of the show, David Einstandig, Jenny Lingle, Brian Small, and I are going to review some text. Were you debating whether it's I or me? Yes. Did you get a little stuck there, big guy? Well, I had to go through the rule, and you say, you get rid of everyone and say me or I, and then it works, and that's how you conclude which is you right. Know, Olivia so would have been able so to. So I stopped, and I popped in I right. and me, and then I came Jenny, do you know what Strunk and White is? Strunk and White's a great I, book. No. Yes, Strunk and White is... is, is okay, is, Jenny, I never had we use this week. It's only about 100 pages, 80 pages. You need to read Strunk and White. It's 149 pages. 149. What is Strunk Jenny, and White. I never gave you Strunk and White? No. Uh, did I give it to you? No, but I had it I all the way through you. college no, and law school. I had and, Strunk and White. Uh, okay. I think I had it in high school, too. Yeah, it's a, it, it is a great it's in my short office. book you have on, to read it. On, on writing. I'll come um, sit on your couch and, and read it. You Whatever. know what's great about Strunk and White, and I want to get, we're going to talk about taxes today, is Strunk and White teaches you how to write in a way that is completely separate from understanding what a preposition is or how to di dissect a paragraph or a sentence. It goes to using common sense rules that are very applicable. And one of the rules is don't use the word We're very. very? Yeah. Um, okay, <laughs> which is what Milt loves. All right, we're going to talk taxes this segment. Uh, tax problems are common. Before we get into a case study of the average Joe with a tax problem, Jenny, I kind of want you to, you found this article for me on uh, some of the top year-end tax tips from TurboTax. There were more, but I want to I want I want to cover a few of them. Walk us through a few of them. And just you know, we'll 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 elaborate a little bit. But these are just year-end things that should be that you can do to try and minimize your tax. Well, the first thing you can do is defer income. That's easier if you are self-employed. You cannot issue your invoices until the end of the year. Um, and then you'll be pretty sure that you're not going to collect those funds until January if you're a cash basis. Right, well, let's talk about this one for the fun of it a little bit because anyone, people that, if you're a wage earner and you're getting your W-2, you have no control over saying, don't do my paycheck because your employer is going to issue the paycheck because it wants, here it wants the deduction. Correct. But if you're running your own business and you can say, well, if I don't collect the money, I'm a cash basis taxpayer until after January 1, then I'm deferring that income to next year. So does that mean that I can just hold the checks and not deposit them into the bank? <laughs> because that's what every that's what a lot of people do. But technically, under the law, is that have you already received the money? Technically, you've received the money at that point. Um, the the one thing you want to make sure that you're you're doing. I just want people to know I would never do something like that. The one thing you want to make sure, though, is it, it doesn't make sense to do if you anticipate the following year to, to, to be income. a better income year or, or the same, because then you're just going to defer a higher tax. So when you say cash year. basis, so what does that mean? Who, who are the people that are excluded from that? The people who, who work on the accrual basis. If you're on a cash basis, you recognize your income in the year of receipt and you recognize your expense in the year that is paid. If you're on an accrual basis, which is more... Uh, akin to proper accounting theory, you recognize income based upon when you earned it and you recognize expense based upon when you incurred it as opposed to when you receive the money and when you pay the money. Most, most taxpayers though, would be on a cash basis for our purposes. Most taxpayers are. If you're running a business and you have inventory, then you're required to be on an accrual basis. Correct. Okay, but if not, if you're a service industry, you're typically on a cash basis. Uh, of accounting. So that's one. All right. Well, how about number two? Uh, the, the next thing you can do is make some charitable deductions. I think this is one of your last available, I don't want to call it a loophole, but area of deduction where you have some leeway in terms of what you value the deduction to be. You do maybe. have to support it with appraisals maybe. and receipts. Maybe. Maybe, maybe. because of the AMT. 
Tell us about the AMT. Well, basically, it's the alternative minimum tax, and it's what's been used um, a lot of times where they're, they're making sure that higher income individuals don't take advantage of high deductions. So what, sometimes... Wait a second. I thought it was annoying, <laughs> miserable tax. It's called alternative minimum tax? Well, it's tax? actually, it's turned into that because when the AMT was first uh, implemented, it was intended, as Jenny said, to catch those that were just getting too much of a tax break based upon uh, their level of income. Yeah, and at real, the time, it, was it was designed really to attack high. Hi, really high earners. But as a result of what has happened over the years and over the last 10 years or so, however many uh, we're talking about that this applies to, it has really got a net now, and it's grabbing so many, probably millions of taxpayers that it was never intended to grab, and I think it one does the, need some reform. And one of the outcomes of the AMT is that you're not allowed to take a deduction for your property taxes, which it makes so, no sense. Well, it's not sense. that you're, it's not, what well, ends up happening you is it, it wipes yeah, you it out. you lose it out, you lose Save. part of it, you lose all of it. You really need to get with your accountant ahead of time to understand whether you're going to be in an AMT situation and whether you should maximize your deductions or potentially defer them to the next year. The problem is incomes tend to be stable, and it's unusual to say, well, I'm going to have high income this year and, and know that you're going to have lower income the next year. So you, you don't get that much leeway to say, okay, well, then we'll, we'll pass on the deduction to next year because if next year's a good year, you're still going to have the AMT problem again. But, you know, you, it, one of the places where this does apply is if you've taken a significant significant withdrawal from an IRA or a 401K to, to do something, and you've bumped your, yourself up into the next tax bracket. If you can defer some of it to the following year, you're, be, you're probably better off. And that's a lot of people these days. Jenny, run me through the last few quickly. Um, you can sell losing inv investments to offset gains. So if you know you're going to lose the money, Take the loss now, it can offset your gains. If you have losses in excess of your gains, you get a $3,000 a year carry forward loss that you can use. Um, you can contribute uh, to the maximum amount to your retirement account. So Brian, for 2014, it's $17,500. So if you haven't met that and you want to um, make second. those deposits. It's 23000 if you're over 50. I think you need yeah. to look out <laughs> yes, for the yes, people you are, old over man. 50. <laughs> and on your IRA, what are the numbers? Uh, on the IRA, um, not for me. 5500 for an IRA or 6500 if you're over 50. Correct. So yeah. Those are a little bit lower. But and you have until April know, to do the, the way, IRA. I was able to. I went to the movie last weekend, and I bought my tickets online, which is a whole different issue. But I took the senior discount because I'm over 60. Now, here's the question. I went with my wife and a friend who were both under 60. Should I have bought three senior tickets, or should I have bought one and two at the higher price? It's one no and brainer. two at the higher price. It's a no-brainer. What's your position? Three seniors. So do you, do, you, do you buy the senior tickets now? If I'm with you. What if you're not? Then I'm shafted. That's a decision we all have to face every day when we buy tickets online. We'll be back <laughs> after the break. If you're retired and in a financial crisis, there is a way out. It pains me when I see a retired couple exhaust their savings by paying credit card bills and for a home hopelessly underwater. Fav Gross specializes in helping retired people in financial crisis. You just can't keep paying until you're broke. You need to address the problem now. 888-235-HELP. That's 888-235-HELP. We're Thav Gross. Our firm will solve your problem. You like your job. What you don't like is the way your boss has been treating you. He's making comments about how you look instead of your work, and he's been touching you inappropriately. If you complain, is he allowed to fire you? Absolutely not. Unwelcome sexual comments, advances in contact are illegal in the workplace. Make him pay. Gold Star Law is here to help you through your employment law problem, whatever it is. Gold Star Law, protecting employees' rights. Call 1-800-WAGES-10 for a free consultation today. Carrying too much debt? Resolve your debt. Call Thav Gross. You don't need to be broke, and you don't need to hit rock bottom. If you have income and you're struggling with debt, dump it. Think about the next 10 or 20 years. If you do what the banks tell you, you'll have nothing to retire with. There is a solution. Don't waste your future. Call Thav Gross. We're experts at eliminating credit card debt. 888-235-HELP. That's 888-235-HELP. Every family has the family meeting. And we all know what that means. 
dad's got dementia. What are we gonna do? What's the care plan that the family has in place? Usually they don't or they struggle with a care plan. When you go home tonight and you talk to your tax person and you talk to your financial person, say, what's the plan that you have in place? And as soon as they don't give you an answer, give me a call because I can do it for you. Tax problems are major problems. Don't let the IRS levy your wages and seize your assets. There is a solution. We're Thav Gross. Our firm will solve your problem. If you're behind on your taxes and owe money to the IRS, call Thav Gross. We've been solving tax problems for 32 years. We stop wage levies, resolve unfiled returns, and obtain the best possible settlements. Call Thav Gross today, 888-235-HELP. All right, welcome back to Law and Reality. Before we go on to our average Joe tax problem, I want to do announcements. We have a seminar coming up Wednesday, December 17th called Figuring Out 2015. Focus is on preserving future income for you and your family. Every dollar you spend on credit card interest, in my view, your job is to figure out a strategy to stop doing that so that that dollar that goes to interest instead goes to tax-deferred savings in a 401k or an IRA. If you buy into that concept and do it for 20 years, you'll end up with a retirement account that will be in excess of a half a million dollars. If you don't do it and you allow yourself to be in the credit card trap of servicing thirty to $80,000 of credit card debt for the next 20 years, you're going to be living on Social Security only, and that's going to be a problem. I mean, and you, know, you could take issue with the statement, but I'm saying in general I think those principles hold true. The seminar is designed to open your eyes to how to accomplish that goal. If you want to sign up for it, it's free. 888-235-HELP is the phone number, or go online, thavgross.com or lawandreality.com. You fill out the form. We email you. Actually, we mail you the tickets to the seminar. You get a free copy of my book. Uh, you get a glass of water and a pen, and you get all of our materials. It's not, we don't feed you. It's not about, it's not like one of these fancy it's financial seminars. It's not about seminars. the base? You know, it's not about, it's no, no Fleming steak dinner. This is about figuring out a way of saving money. It's this the is big the real A, deal. Ken. It's the big A. The bottom line is, if you could sum it up in one word, it's alternatives. And what we do is we let what the you. the big A was. You know, we let you, we give some insight. Our goal is hopefully to give those in attendance insight that there are alternatives out there. And you, have, you, you owe it to yourself and to your family to figure out what those alternatives are, and you can decide to go whatever fork you want. Absolutely. I had, Brian and I were talking about a different A earlier in the week, but we'll, we'll, we'll pass on that one. Um, Retiree's Guide to Social Security from Pat Samasco, free report, SSIfreereport.com, or you can call our office, 888-235-HELP. Another report, Reg X. The Hidden Secrets, How to Save Your Home. I've just upgraded that report uh, and updated it. Uh, upgraded or updated? Which both, one? Both. RegXHomesaver.com. Financial Crisis Analyzer is on the Law and Reality website. I want to thank our sponsors, Gold Star Law, Samasco Law, Trips Auto Shop and Collision Center in Jackson and Lansing, U.S. Staffing, and Thav Gross. Ken, one quick question for Jenny before you get to the case study. I want to make sure that we talk about this for a moment. We're now getting close to the end of the year, and then we also, April comes around real quick. Filing versus having the ability to pay. What's your take? Well, the first thing that I advise people to do is that don't wait until April 15th to, to get all of your materials and things ready. The, the earlier in the year you can get that return done so you don't have surprises. Um, failure to file and failure to pay are separate issues, and they're both penalties. So if you, if you file your, your return and you just can't afford to pay it, the maximum penalties that you can end up paying is 25% of the unpaid tax. However, if you don't fail, if you fail to file, that's an additional 25%. So you almost end up paying 50% in penalties if you don't file and you don't it's pay. It's a complete waste of money to incur the failure to file your file penalty. Yeah, failure and, to and, pay can arise as a need. If you don't have the money, you don't have the money. We'll right. deal with it. But failing to file 
is a waste of money, and Brian's going to say can, right now it can it be also catastrophic. Screws up your ability to discharge the yep, taxes because of if the service files a substitute for return for you. Hold that thought. Tell us about it in the context of average Joe, because he's coming up. Let me we'll summarize. Right to failure, no, I don't want to summarize. Failure, I want to do the, quiet wanna, for a second. Failure to file will get you delay, but in the end, you will pay. Oh, that's so <laughs> Thank you, right. Dr. Seuss. Wait, wait, wait. wait. Hold on. You liked that. that. Say you that liked again. it. No, say that admit again. that you liked that. Say, say that again no. for me, because I have to do a slide for the TV admit version. Admit that you liked it. I did, but say it again. Failure to file will get you delay, but in the end, you will pay. Get you delay, but in the end, you will pay. Hey, yes, I like it very much. We're going to do a slide Genius. on it with your Genius. picture. Okay, now, average okay. Joe. Tax. I do not right. like green eggs and ham. I do not I like I can go them. now. Sam, I am. <laughs> yes, seems so we know we don't have time to do the average Joe's uh, case study. Here are the facts. Pay attention. Average Joe has filed his tax returns, which Brian's going to comment on in a minute. He's married to Betty. That's where I got Betty from earlier. Okay. Betty uh, Joe? So they have a joint return. Average Joe comes in, he tells Jenny and me, he says, I estimate my tax liability, 100000 I owe the feds, I owe the state about 35000 We say to him, how much by year? He says, I don't know. It's, I haven't filed for, for many years, I don't know. Or I filed, but I, haven't, I owe from, from several years. He's got 30000 of credit card debt, he makes $8,000 a month, his house is slightly underwater, his mortgage is $70,000, so he doesn't have a big mortgage. Uh, his cars are leased. He has no savings. Those are the key facts that were presented. The first thing we have to do is what, Jenny, when we're trying to analyze his situation? We don't even know what years he owes the tax for. The first thing I do is I get a power of attorney and I fax that in, and then I go online and I pull what they call the account transcripts. That shows me whether the client filed the returns timely, uh, whether he filed them late, um, what years he owes for, and certain things that I can use to determine whether those taxes would be discharged, dischargeable in a bankruptcy okay. should he qualify. Right. Right. So good. So the first thing is you're looking to see if the returns are filed because, Brian, why is that important? Well, as I was starting to say earlier, a substitute for return in bankruptcy is non-dischargeable. It's never dischargeable. What is it? What is it? That is when the IRS goes about filing a tax return on your behalf because you have failed to do so. So... Uh, that hiding your head in the sand concept, failure to, to failure to file may cause delay. It also may be uh, deadly. So, so Jenny, let me to get let, out let of me ask tax. you this, Jenny, in this scenario. SFR is substitute for return, which could be stupid frigging yeah return. This is we get this question often, Jenny, when you say, you know what, I need you to sign this power of attorney, and then I got to get your transcripts, and then all of a sudden the client says, well, does that now put a red target on my back? Is the IRS now going to do a, a substitute we return? We know where you are if, now. If, if, if I'm not sure if I want to go forward with a full plan. So what is the impact of simply getting a power so you can get a transcript? With the Internal Revenue Service, there there is no impact. Um, it doesn't get you assigned quicker. Basically, you can call either practitioner priority services or we can use e-services online. So nobody even knows we're looking at that point. So we're coming to a break. So the impact is it allows you to get the information that we need to help you. Uh, it doesn't put a bullet on the on your back or on your nose for the IRS to come and, you know, and, and, and it's not like a movie. Uh, no like target. The, yeah, target. Where I'm thinking of who's the, the, the spy guy who's... Everything was moving always real fast. Robert Ludlum movies, books. We'll be back after the break. Is the debt piling up? Struggling to get by? It's all about preserving future income. Bankruptcy is one option. When it's right, it's the least costly, most effective way to save your home, eliminate a second mortgage, and wipe out credit card debt. But you need to address the problem now. We help people with bankruptcy. Call the experts. We're Thav Gross. Our firm will solve your problem. 888-235-HELP. That's 888-235-HELP. Going from hourly to salary seemed like a good career move, but now you're working 60 hours a week instead of 40, and you aren't getting paid any of that extra time. You're stuck, right? Wrong. You can be on salary and still be entitled to overtime. If you've been wrongly denied such pay, you may be entitled to that and more. Gold Star Law is here to help you through your employment law problem, whatever it is. Gold Star Law, protecting employees' rights. Call 1-800-WAGES-10 for a free consultation today. Carrying too much debt? Resolve your debt. Call Thav Gross. 
You don't need to be broke and you don't need to hit rock bottom. If you have income and you're struggling with debt, dump it. Think about the next 10 or 20 years. If you do what the banks tell you, you'll have nothing to retire with. There is a solution. Don't waste your future. Call Fav Gross. We're experts at eliminating credit card debt. 888-235-HELP. That's 888-235-HELP. Every family has the family meeting. And we all know what that means. Dad's got dementia. What are we going to do? What's the care plan that the family has in place? Usually they don't or they struggle with a care plan. When you go home tonight and you talk to your tax person and you talk to your financial person and say, what's the plan that you have in place? And as soon as they don't give you an answer, give me a call because I can do it for you. Tax problems are major problems. Don't let the IRS levy your wages and seize your assets. There is a solution. We're Thav Gross. Our firm will solve your problem. If you're behind on your taxes and owe money to the IRS, call Thav Gross. We've been solving tax problems for 32 years. We stop wage levies, resolve unfiled returns, and obtain the best possible settlements. Call Thav Gross today, 888-235-HELP. All right, welcome back. We're going through the average Joe's tax return. Right before we came to the break, we worried about whether if you pull a transcript, it puts a target on your back. The answer is no. And the actor or the character I was thinking about was Jason Bourne, Bourne Conspiracies. It's not that, it's not that type of a situation. All right, so Jenny, on our average Joe and Betty, you pull their transcripts. This is what's revealed. In 2013, they owe federal tax of 15000 state 6000 2012, they owe 15000 to the feds. 6000 to the state. 2011, they owe 15000 They owe six to the state uh, for 2011. 2010, 9, and 8, they owe 20, 25, and 30 to the feds. They owe 7, 8, and 10 to the state. So it turns out that their total liability on tax is 120000 federal and 43000 state, a little bit more than Joe thought when he came in. So now the question is... It's always is, more than the it's, client it, thinks. It's always, it more. always so more. What difference does it make, Brian, as to the amounts that are due in taxes by year from the standpoint of the analysis that you make on dischargeability of taxes? Well, there's a basic premise of dischargeability. First Ten, of all, 10, we're talking 40 about taxes. bankruptcy income tax right. can be dischargeable That's right. in circumstances if you meet this rule. Right. First, the tax had to have come due more than three years ago. Your tax returns had to have been filed for at least two years. And you cannot have been assessed within 240 days of the fi before you file the bankruptcy. Right, so where does that leave us for Joe and Betty, given the years that we laid out? Well, on paper right now, 10, 8, 9, and 10 are dischargeable. 2011 becomes dischargeable. April 16th of 2015. And the important fact here is Those that they, they filed these returns themselves. They did. Well, these are not SFRs that we were talking about before. All right, so now we know they're in a situation where if we can fit them into a Chapter 7 bankruptcy, we could discharge 8, 9, and 10, and then we will deal with 11 and 12, or maybe we'll wait until April of 2015 and then discharge 11 as Strategically, well. Strategically, if you can wait, Why this not? couple, it, it right. absolutely makes sense for a number of reasons, including what Jenny can do for them after their tax liabilities are discharged because there's going to be a remaining tax obligation, which will be less than $50,000 if they wait until 2015. Or we might be able to do an offer and compromise for that. But before we get to that, now I got to tell you, take these numbers that we have. Will these? Will we be able to file a Chapter Seven bankruptcy? Yes. Let's analyze. What, let's, let's. Yes. Will they pass the means test? There is no means test. Why not? Because in this situation, because what is the means test. All right, and the quickly, means test is an arbitrary and capricious set of standards set forth by Congress that requires you to, to like apply. Push the button. Yeah, right. apply your uh, income against deductions that the Congress says you're allowed to take. If you have money left over after applying the deductions, you fail the means test if it's less than if it's more than about two hundred dollars a month. All right, let me put it into English for the rest of the world. If you make too much money, you have the means to pay it back and therefore you're not allowed to file chapter seven. In the government's view, not in reality. Call it the mean test, not the means test. I like that. Okay, now let's analyze their debt. 
So now you said there's an exception, though. Why does the means test not apply here? Because in this case, the tax debt total is greater than their consumer debt. Tax debt, 1040 debt, is considered non-consumer debt for the purposes of filing bankruptcy. Even though you're a consumer and you incurred your taxes, it's considered non-consumer debt. So, so a lot debt. of people uh, misconstrue this analysis as business debt versus non-business debt, but it's really, is it, does it fall under the classification under the bankruptcy code as consumer versus non-consumer? Yeah, it comes in as consumer versus Ta non-consumer. Tax debt is non-consumer debt. Right. It's, so, even, it's even actually wrong on the face of the bankruptcy petition. It says business or, or consumer. It should say non-consumer or consumer. All right, so in this case, for Joe and Betty, they have a total amount of debt of 243000 between their tax debt, their mortgage debt, and their credit cards. But only 100000 of it is the mortgage and credit card debt. 143000 is the tax debt. Therefore, they can file the Chapter 7. So you put them in a Chapter 7. You discharge their taxes. You wait till August 5th, uh, till, uh, April, April 16th of 2015. You get rid of 2011. All we have left is 12 and 13, which is $30,000, $42,000 worth of tax. Jenny... What are your options to help them on the last $42,000 of tax in well, the next two with minutes? The, with respect to the IRS, the first thing they can do, because it's under 50000 in its recent tax years, they can do a 72-month payment plan. With the Michigan Department of Treasury, the easiest payment plan would be uh, a 24-month payment. But we would also look to see whether they qualified for an offer and compromise. Now that sounds like more fun, because what <laughs> happens if they do? And then they can settle their debt for less than they owe. Basically, with an offer and compromise, we look at your assets, we look at your income, we look at an ability to pay on an installment agreement, and we do a calculation. Um, there's a lot of companies out there that I want to say are really uh, taking advantage of people with the offer and compromise. If you retain somebody to file an offer and compromise for you, and you're a situation um, like Betty and Joe's here, you should be able to have a free consultation or a consultation for an hourly fee to figure out whether or not you qualify or not. And even more important on that is if you just go to a tax advisor, they're going to try and do an offer and compromise and address all of the years, whereas what they need, what Betty and Joe need to do first is file the bankruptcy, get rid of 208 through 2010 well, it's not just that. right if, off the bat. If they just had tax debt and they didn't have uh, the credit card debt and the mortgage, we might be having a different discussion and saying, okay, just do an offer and compromise. But when they did the Chapter 7, they got rid of tax debt, but they also got rid of uh, their credit card debt. And here. real quick, Johnny, I just want to have the point. Mention the if, state, because we've got one minute left. If, if Joe and Betty came in right now and the state was on their back, we're on November 15th, we got to get to April of 2015, we have strategies to address with the IRS so our clients are not right. worried about the phone right call from the IRS every day. And the state now has an offer and compromise law as well, which just Correct. comes into effect January 1. So if you meet the feds, you meet the state. That wraps us up. Hopefully. Jenny, Brian, David, thanks for being with me this morning on Law and Reality. We will be back next week.